Hello people of YouTube, my name is Ian. Uh, welcome to a, a TV show review today. I'm not doing a gaming uh, news like I did yesterday. I'm going to be reviewing uh, the Solar Opposites TV show that just came out today. I binge watched it all just so I can uh, make this review. I, I love Rick and Morty so I figured I would like the show too. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I always binge watch these shows. I'm always talking about them with Sam or just like out loud, usually just with Sam. So I thought like why not put it on YouTube. So yeah. I'm going to be streaming some Valorant in the background uh, just because, you know, copyright and stuff or whatever. I don't know how that works, but I'm not going to put any of that stuff in my video. I'm just going to be playing some Valorant, so enjoy the gameplay. So of course today we're going to be talking about uh, the long-awaited TV animated show Solar Opposites. Uh, it premiered on Hulu today and I made sure to binge all of it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Justin Roiland, uh, so I made sure to watch the show right when it came out. Uh, it was created by Justin Roiland and not Justin Roiland and Dan Hartman this time around, but it was actually created by Justin Roiland and Mike Mahan, so um, that's pretty interesting. I've never seen anything by Mike Mahan, but I still ma made sure to give it a watch. Um, but to make a long story short, uh, Definitely go in ahead and make sure and watch it if you're a Rick and Morty fan and you just wanted to hear a yes or no answer Should you go watch it? Uh, yes, go watch it. Uh, it's pretty funny It has the same type of comedy has the same time of art and animation style and it has the same type of uh, sci-fi elements It's a little bit different the way it introduces everything But I definitely think if you're a fan of Rick and Morty, you're gonna like this show as well so with that quick uh, disclaimer out of the way, let's just get right into it. Uh, so at the root of the show, it's about an alien family who has crash landed on Earth. Um, though they do call themselves a quote unquote family, um, I don't think they're like a family in the sense of like a traditional mom, dad, like they had children. Um, they talks about it throughout the show and it kind of like reveals parts and parts about uh, how they came into fruition, how they came to Earth. I don't want to talk about it too much. Um, I don't want to have any spoilers or ruin anything about the show or anything like that. But I definitely think that it keeps you guessing, it keeps you on your toes about the aliens. Like um, you're always learning throughout the show, like what the aliens can do, like specifically about the race. Um, they might have special properties compared to humans. Uh, some stuff is the same though. Uh, you'll notice that they all have the same commonality of that they all want uh, to be liked just like humans, uh, which is pretty funny. They all have like a need to be liked even though they keep claiming, especially Torvo, that he didn't want to land on Earth uh, and he wanted to land on somewhere that had no life. He still uh, ha feels the need to be liked um, by everyone, which is pretty interesting. I said Torvo. So a quick rundown of the family before I keep talking about anything. Um, we have Corvo, who in my notes I kept writing down as Torvo. So if I say Torvo throughout the video, that's why. But it's Corvo with a K. Um, so he's kind of like, I guess you could say the dad. Um, he's more of like the authority figure. He makes sure that the aliens are getting done what they need to get done. Uh, mostly like they're trying to repair their spaceship. So he's trying to keep a focal uh, point on that so they can get back or get somewhere else off Earth. Um, he definitely changes like throughout the shows or throughout the episodes. Uh, mostly he just like kind of leans in toward human nature more or human culture, I should say, not human nature. Um, he definitely leans more into it uh, as opposed to in the beginning where he doesn't really seem inclined to want to do anything. Uh, he's definitely the one that's, oh, that's the farthest away from Earth culture uh, compared to the other ones. Um, on the flip side, you have the other um, older alien who's named uh, Terry. Um, he is probably the one that's the most into earth culture like he already knows like which movies are not the good ones like if there's a movie that everyone knows is like bad like everyone just knows the bad movie like he, he he also knows that he's like very involved in earth culture he always has like funny t-shirts on so that's pretty cool too to see uh, they always like change his shirt every episode i think um so that's pretty cool to see there's like two different sides of um you know the aliens and how they perceive earth um they both came with replicants um Torvo had uh, like a mini Torvo and then like uh, Terry had a mini Terry too. Um, the mini Terry is named Jessie. Um, she's a girl. Um, throughout the show, they kind of say that they picked their gender, which is weird. And Jessie said that she picked the, to be a girl. So that's pretty interesting. And, and Yumilak, who's the, the boy, uh, the, the replicant of Torvo, he chose to be a boy. Um, I, it, it doesn't say that until a little bit later, but... But yeah, uh, like I was saying, um, Yumilak does reflect Corvo in the sense that he is a little bit 
less opposed to earth culture or no he's not even opposed to earth culture he's more just uh more in touch with his alien roots i guess uh because he still likes movies and he likes hawkeye and stuff like he likes like basic human culture too so and then jesse on the other hand is like super into it just like terry um so it's just kind of two different waves of the spectrum again is that is that offensive so a lot of the comedy is derived from the aliens trying to envelop themselves in earth culture or um, just situations that they would get themselves involved with and that brings me to my main point uh, which is oh my god my cat just jumped on my desk uh, but that does bring me to my main point like I was saying uh, how it compares to Rick and Morty because when the trailers were coming out that's basically what everyone was talking about because the art style is the same uh, it's made by Justin Roiland uh, the main character is also voiced by Justin Roiland so he kind of does already sound like Rick and um, there's a lot of sci-fi elements involved with the show too so people are wondering like if he was even gonna be any different and it even showed that Corvo was like the smart one and he almost looked like a genius so it, people are really wondering uh, if it was different from Rick and Morty and, and I really do believe that it, it is different enough from Rick and Morty to hold its own it doesn't feel like the Cleveland show or like some bad spin-off or something like that where they're just trying to mooch off the fame of a different show i definitely think this show can hold its own and um like at the end of the season they say you know see you next season because um you know they know you're they know they're gonna get you back for a second season because it, it, it really was good so um like I, I wrote down like a few points as to why it's different um i don't think uh corvo is as huge of a genius or as crazy of an outlier as rick is i think the two concepts are different um corvo is just maybe an averagely smarter person uh but he just happens to have crash landed on earth and um i don't think he's on the level of rick and i don't think the two ideas are very similar like they do that maybe one's a smart character at, in, in both situations but they're definitely not the same and although it deals with sci-fi concepts, um, they're definitely rooted in in different ways. Like like I like I said, Rick makes his own devices, so he knows how they work perfectly. As opposed to um, these aliens, who they know how to create like new devices, but for some reason they can't fix their spaceship. So I feel like they're not at the advanced level that Rick's at. And Rick is like top in dimensions and stuff. So if they could do that, they would be able to get off their home planet like very easily. Uh, I mean, get off Earth like very easily. Um, some differences aside from Rick, um, there's definitely more of a refined story. I feel like Rick and Morty is kind of, it goes episode by episode. And though it has like, you know, the evil Morty and everything in the background, um, there is like a story like what's what's going on with with Rick why did he just get there and everything like that uh, I definitely think it's more um, I don't know you could you'll, you'll see when you watch it I don't want to spoil too much but there's definitely something going on uh, and I think it's pretty cool like uh, you're kind of wondering what's happening and it's more mysterious and it's less like uh, episode per episode like Rick and Morty is um, I do definitely get a different feel from watching this show too. I, I don't know how to describe a feel, but it definitely doesn't feel like it's revolved too much around the sci-fi concept. What I wrote down is that it seems less of a sci-fi show um, because it's written down as like a family sitcom. So it, it's more about like what's going on with the stories, what's going on with the sci-fi elements instead of why everything's going on because that's uh, what Rick and Morty not focuses on but a lot of it is like why is this going on why are they hopping dimensions why are like the timelines getting split so on and so forth I definitely do feel like it relies on less gags like um, I don't know like Rick and Morty just kind of says random stuff and like it's funny because it's Rick and Morty and they're kind of just making up random alien and alternate dimension stuff. Um, this one, it's funny, but it, it, it makes like a little bit more sense. Like if you try to show it to like, I don't know, like your mom, it's still, they're still going to think it's weird, but like um, definitely not as, not as weird. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but it doesn't rely on like, I don't know, just weird gags. I like the weird gags. I'm not saying that I don't like the weird gags, but it just doesn't have them as much. 
in avoidance of keeping this video too long i think i'm gonna kind of cut it there and finish talking about what i'm saying about the show i can make another video going more into depth i have a lot more stuff written down as i was watching the show a lot of concepts a lot of cool stuff i didn't want to spoil the show for anyone that just wants to watch the review and see why like if, if they want to watch the show uh so i'm gonna try to avoid like spoiling stuff but i did write down a whole bunch of cool stuff that happened throughout the show and i'd be glad to talk about that and i also have a bunch of questions too obviously like i said the question the show raised more questions than it answered i guess uh the, the trailer we were just wondering if it was good but now now we're wondering a whole bunch of stuff because now i like the show and i'm invested um but yeah um so i think it was a good show overall definitely go ahead and watch it if you're a rick and morty fan or if you're just a, a fan of animation or comedy in general i think it's a good watch it gets um definitely the best at the end i think the seventh and the eighth eighth episode are the best ones uh, i'm glad i watched those before making the review because they really were the best ones um the one where they fight the bear that one's crazy that one's crazy uh but other than that um thank you uh for watching the video and have a nice day